Hey guys, Adam here with another video on Arcade Game Repair and in this video we're going to talk about IC Repair. And so what do I mean by that? Well, this is a Donkey Kong PCB I have on the bench here for a customer. They were having some sound issues. I went and pulled the sound CPU which sits right there and here it is. The legs fell off as you can see. Let me see if I can trick this camera into zooming in here on the chip. Here we go. And so you can see here this leg fell off. You can see there's quite a bit of like uh, corrosion or whatever you want to call it. It's like a buildup of some black junk on here. Um, some of the other pins broke off. And so this is common with um, these sound CPUs for Nintendo but also for Namco Customs. And so here is a 52 series custom and you can see it's very similar. You get that black crusty stuff on there and some of these legs are just very brittle. You can see they're already starting to bend. And so it's inevitable that you're going to run into a case eventually where you've got one of these parts and the legs are just so brittle that they break off right and so we don't want to throw this away which is typically what happens and then you have to go on eBay or beg on cloth for somebody to to find you a replacement what we would like to do is re repair this because internally the chip is fine right just the legs are broken off but the silicon inside is fine and the chip should be totally fine inside we just need a way to repair this and so that's what we're going to do in this video all right, so what tools are you going to need to do this? Well, obviously you're going to need a soldering iron and some solder. That's a given. Um, solder flux. I am a huge advocate of solder flux. This is a Kester solder flux pen. Must have. And then we have some wire to make bridges if we need to. I like to use wire wrap. Well, wire wrap wire. Uh, it's very thin and it's easy to work with. Of course, we have our busted IC here, and we have a file. And so this is a small file that I use many times in the lab. Uh, specifically to clean up corroded pins like this. I'll kind of just go in a small, gentle, uh, semicircular motion and clean all the leads up, get rid of all that crusty stuff because we want a nice bond um, with these sockets. And so that brings us to the socket. So um, I know some people are going to cringe, uh, but I use machine pin sockets. In this application, you have to use machine pin, but typically you would not want to use machine pin. You would want to use dual wipe sockets when you're replacing a socket in a PCB or something like that. Um, you don't want to use machine pin in those kind of applications because these are not flexible at all. They're very fixed. And um, when you uh, clean all the solder out of the uh, PCB, you have to really make sure you get all of the solder out. Otherwise, these typically do not go in. But in this case, this is exactly what we want to use, right? We want to use this as a kind of a, a recipient of this guy. We're going to put that in there. And we're going to use these pins as little pools. We can fill them up with solder and uh, it'll it'll connect to the pins that exist the ones that don't we can use our wire and we can make little bridges to these little posts here and so that's the plan so why don't i go ahead and set up uh well i mean this is also handy too if you happen to have a pan of ice which is what we're going to use to kind of hold on to everything as we work with it so if you have one of those that is key too and uh, so let me set up the pan of ice with uh, one of these um, machine pin sockets and then we'll get started so while we have the soldering iron heating up why don't we just go ahead and clean these leads and again so what I do is you know do you really want to be careful I typically inspect these first to see if any of them are on the verge of breaking off if they are then I usually just break them off gently um, because I don't want to have to go through all this work and then have something break out in the field when I give it back to a customer and so just go through and make sure that any of them that are really brittle are already gone and then once I do that I kinda of just go like I said in a semicircular motion cleaning up the pins as best I can and I do want to support the back of these pins with my finger uh, if otherwise because you know like I said these are on the verge of breaking if you're just putting pressure on them with this and I have done that in the past live and learn that the pins will just snap right off and so sometimes I'll come in the back like that or sometimes I'll take my fingers in the back like this and then just support them as I go ahead and clean them up so you can kind of see here how these are getting much cleaner getting all that nasty patina or whatever you want to call it off and then you end up with nice clean pins so I'm going to go around clean up all this nastiness and then we can start soldering it into the socket I should probably point out that this is probably the worst one that I've had to deal with um, typically I'll see pins that are like this here 
Uh, let me see if I can hold it this way. I just don't want the camera to lose its zoom. Where's my little, there we go. This here, right? And this is not bad. There's some meat there that I can probably solder a little wire to and be all, these are not a problem. This one here, I can probably solder a little wire to. This one here worries me. I mean, it's almost, actually it's flush. And so it's going to be tricky. In fact, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pull this off getting a wire uh, onto that point there. Um, this is probably the first time that I've ever seen it get that close. And what sucks is I've got another one right here. So there's a little bit of meat here. There's some meat here. Those are not too bad. This one here and this one here scares me. So this is going to be a test, I guess, to see if we can do this. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> but let's continue. Let's see if we can pull this off. Okay, I'm just about done. So on these last guys here, you know, so here I'm kind of doing this nice gentle motion and here I'm kind of just going right in and getting a nice clean edge. And you have to have a nice clean edge or the solder will not stick. And so you can see that's nice and shiny and these are nice and shiny. Now, for the ones that have these pins on there, if this part here is not absolutely perfect, that's okay as long as this part is because this is going to be sitting inside of the pins which will act as a little solder well and then when you fill them up with solder it's really going to adhere to this not so much this. If you can get these clean that's great I mean absolutely try um, but don't go to the point where you're going to risk breaking these pins off and so this is really the area that you want to get clean for these. For these here just file them down a little bit so you get some nice clean metal. This one here boy, I don't know we'll see uh, and then we'll see if we can solder these on. So I think we are all set to go ahead and put it in the socket here. So let me mount the socket, I'll reposition the camera, and then we'll start soldering. All right, so we got our socket and frame here. So what I'm gonna do is take the flux pen and just go over all of these pins. We wanna coat anything, any surface that we're gonna apply solder to with some flux. So that's probably a good starting point. Let me crank this down a smidge. And then what we're gonna do is go back to our chip here and do the same thing. So anything that is gonna get exposed to the solder, we just wanna throw a little flux on there. Don't forget the pins, especially, I should say, these that don't have, I'm not even frame, sorry. Especially these pins that don't even have a lot of metal to them because we need them to be as clean as possible and have some flux on there. So we just hit these up with some flux and then we can go ahead and gently put it into the socket here. Actually I think we're going to pull out of the vise so that I can handle it better with my hand. Make sure all these pins are sitting in here as nice as possible and just very gently push it in. Okay, so that's what we're after, all right? And so for all of these where pins exist, we can just apply some solder. One of these, the pin didn't exist. I don't. I think it might have been, might have been this one. But you can see that even though the pin doesn't exist, the part of the metal that's still left is touching that little, uh, the pin. So we can just solder that all up. These guys that are remaining is where we're going to have to use the wire to kind of make up the difference, okay? Now, when you solder these, all right, don't just throw them in the vise and start soldering away. What you'll find is that as you heat up these pins, the plastic around them gets soft and the pins will start to move. And then by the time you're done, you're looking at your work, you're like, this looks great, and you turn it over and all the pins are all bent in different ways and so you'll have to start over. So what I found is take another one and kind of use it as a uh, whatever you want to call it, like a mold, right? So if you clamp this guy in like this, and then you put this in here, there's no way that those pins can move, right? It kind of keeps everything nice and stable. So you solder all, solder it all up, let it cool down, and then all the pins will stay fixed. And then you're going to take this socket and you're going to put it into the PCB as the recipient for this uh, for the pins. Because what you'll find also is that if you try to take a machine pin socket like this, put it into a dual wipe, it'll be flopping around. It just does not fit securely. So Unfortunately, not only do you have to do some soldering work here, you will have to replace the solder that's actually sitting in the PCB. So let me reattach this here, and then we'll get started soldering some of these pins.
right, so we got all of our, uh, well, the ones that don't require bridging, we got all of those complete. And it's not gonna look gorgeous. I mean, just you just wanna make sure that everything has got good connections. And so for these, we need to make some bridging, right? For these couple here. So we're gonna take some wire and just strip it off. So I've got some bare wire here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to solder <clears throat> one end in the hole here. And then once it's cool, I'm gonna fold it up like that and then tack it onto the other side and then snip it off. So I'm just bending it down like that so it sits in the hole. Get my solder here. And just try to pin it in place, fill up that with some solder. There you go, let that cool for a second here. Okay, it's not going anywhere. Fold that back up against the pin, like that. Maybe take uh, one of my tweezers, take some tweezers, and just make sure that's nice and snug. There we go, like that. And then I can go back and see if I can connect it to that pin right there. There we go. Perfect. There you go, connected to the pin. Then I get my shears. Where are my shears? Oh. They're over here. All right, and then snip it off. Boom, that's it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest. I think we are all set here. Let me bring this up so you guys can see it. Hopefully, we can get our camera to zoom in here. Just wait a second while it finds its way. Come on, camera. Come on, camera. There we go. All right. So you can see here, again, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be nice, solid connections. And for the wires that, uh, or the ones that didn't have pins, you can see where we you know, reconnected them with some wire. So I'm gonna have to now go ahead and remove the socket that's in the PCB, replace it with a um, machine pin one, this one here actually, and then we can go ahead and plug this in and see if it works. Okay, here we are back at the PCB. You can see here that I replaced that socket with a machine pin socket. And so now we can see if all of that hard work paid off. So here's our sound CPU. And what's nice about machine pin socket is that they just click in like Legos. So you can even do it with one hand. Look at that. All right, moment of truth. Let's fire this up. Don't get too excited. That's the analog jump sound. We'll wait for this to power up. Okay, here we go. So let me coin it up. My little cheater method here. Aha! Fire this up. Beautiful. Let me turn it down. I don't think it's too loud. Sounds pretty good to me. So yeah, there you have it. That is how I go about replacing, uh, or repairing, I should say, an IC with bad legs. And so hopefully you guys found that useful. Hope you can use the same method when you come across bad chips and get them back running again. Save you guys a few bucks. All right, I think that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, as always. God bless, and we'll catch you on the next one.
Thanks for watching guys and hey, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of my other videos on arcade game repair. Oh, seriously?